Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. We are in the middle of a series that we've been on for a time and we're still not finished. We got, we got a long ways to go. And, uh, but the word is just blessing us so much. So we are so grateful that you're joining us. Thank you for joining us. You know what? Let's just pray. Amen. As we start this episode today, Father, I thank you for your word. It's a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our path. Father, we're believing for answers. We're expecting answers for our lives. We're expecting clarity of your will for our lives so that we can, we can walk it out more fully. So, Father, we, we bring our agreement to your word. We bring our faith to your word. We bring our expectation. And we take unto ourselves ears that hear. Eyes that see, hearts that are open and receptive to your word so that we can not just be hearers, but we're better doers of that word. And we thank you for it. And everybody said, amen. Amen. We're so glad to have you with us. We are, we have been teaching out of my book called The Price of the Double Portion Anointing. I'm not trying to say that everyone will walk under a double portion anointing, but I am saying this, there's an anointing that abides within every believer and that anointing is in there to put you over. And we have to know how to cooperate with that anointing so that we don't hinder the flow of the anointing that's within us. Amen. We want it to have its full effect in our life. Amen. And so I'm talking about something that happened to me. This is where the book came out of, an event when I was in uh, St. Petersburg, Russia. In 2018, Jesus came into my hotel room and talked to me. And that's where this book came from. It was for me, but it was for the body of Christ also. Previous episodes, I talk in this series about what Jesus said to me that night. You say, did you see him with your physical eye? No, but in the spirit, I knew by word of knowledge where he was and heard what he said to me. So that night he talked to me for about an hour. The next morning, the Holy Spirit um, added some additional things on that would bring clarity with that. So this is the portion that we're on. To hear what Jesus said to me, you have to watch the previous episodes. But one of the things that the Spirit of God said the next morning after that happened, he said to walk in the double portion anointing calls for great consecration. So when we talk about being consecrated to the will of God, Mm -hmm. the plan of God. What about this? Being consecrated to the word of God. Mm -hmm. What about this? Being consecrated to following the leading of the spirit, how the spirit leads us. We consecrate ourselves to follow him. Amen. Consecration is not something that God does. It's something we do. Amen. God will show us his plan, but to fulfill that plan, we have to be consecrated to it. To be consecrated means we're leaving off the unimportant. We cut away the unimportant. Uh That doesn't mean God doesn't want you to do things you enjoy. Mm -hmm. You can have recreation. You can have things that refresh you and and things that you enjoy. But you're you're not letting those things intrude into the important fulfillment of what you're born for. That's being consecrated. Amen. And as I said previously, when we first get born again, our life may look like this. We have a wide scope, so to speak, of how things we enjoy, things we do, things we participate in. But as we grow up spiritually and as we see God's plan for our life more clearly, we start honing in and we start streamlining and we start cutting away the things that would hold us back in our effectiveness in what we're born for. That's consecration. And we don't just consecrate once. It's an ongoing 
uh, choice we make. Yes. Every, every day I consecrate myself to the plan. Yes. Every day. Amen. You can say, I, I choose to live consecrated, but every day you have to make choices that are in line with that consecration. Yes. Amen. Yes. So consecration doesn't take something from us. It frees us up so we can lay hold of what? Of the more that God has for more. us. He has more for us. Yes. And to, to, to grab hold of something more, you have to let go of something that would um, hold you back. Uh -huh. Amen. And it's not necessarily, I'm not talking about a, sin, a sinful lifestyle necessarily. Uh, we shouldn't be living in a sinful lifestyle. But I'm, even what would hold us back is not always something sinful. It's just something that won't accelerate us mm -hmm. in our race. It won't enhance us in our race. Yes. It's a distraction. Yes. Um, consecration brings us into being wholehearted toward God's plan. Yes. Wholehearted. And no one is a success in any endeavor, in any profession, or in any call of God unless they're wholehearted. Mm -hmm. To be half-hearted, you won't have the measure or degree of success that you could have. Right. Amen. Amen. And so this is where we left off when we were talking about it. I want to go ahead and real, real quickly, let's read something that Paul wrote to Timothy. We touched this in the previous episode, but I want to touch it again and go further. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verses 12 through the 16th verse. This is the Amplified Classic I'm reading out of. And it says uh, midway through verse 12, Paul says, be an example, be a pattern for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Till I come, devote yourself to public and private reading, to exhortation, and to teaching and instilling doctrine. Verse 14, do not neglect. Now, neglect is an enemy. Right. Neglect yeah. will rob from us. Amen. 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 Just to do, just to neglect what's available to us is a problem. So we don't want to neglect. He says, do not neglect the gift mm -hmm. which is in you. Verse 15, practice and cultivate and meditate upon these duties. Mm -hmm. yes. And then he says this, throw yourself wholly into them. I mean, be excited about it. Yes. Get all in. Jump yes. all in. Don't just check and see, do I want to do this? If God says do it, you want to do it. Yes. Yes. Amen. Throw yourself wholly into them as your ministry. Why? So that your progress may be evident to everybody. Meaning this, we should not ever be not progressing. Right. We should always be progressing in our spiritual life, in our faith, in our, in our love walk, in, in our consecration. Everything should be progressing. Verse 16, uh, 15, so that your progress may be evident to everybody. See, people can tell when we're advancing or not. Right. Don't you know that your spouse can tell whether or not you're developing spiritually? Don't you know the home can tell it? Uh, yeah. Right. Verse 16, look well to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in these things. Hold to them. That means don't just stop it. Mm -hmm. Don't start only to stop it later when you've lost the thrill. Uh -huh. Choose to be thrilled. Yes. <laughs> Choose to be thrilled. Yes. Be consistent yes. because you're going to have to run into systems of habits mm -hmm. to continue. When, the, when uh, the start, the momentum of the start isn't there anymore, just your right choice every day. I'm going to uh -huh. keep doing the habits or the sp yes. keep st uh, with the system I need to do to, yes. to just fulfill this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep yeah. doing it. Yeah. And that's what he says. He says, persevere in these things. In other words, don't just be a starter, be a finisher. Amen. For by doing so, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. So our consecration doesn't just affect us. It affects somebody else too. Yes. Amen. Don't you know that Paul's consecration has affected the body of Christ since ever since he was on this earth? Yes. Amen. Because God used him to pen half of the New Testament. Do you think that affected us, his consecration to God to fulfill that? Yes. Yeah, it affected us and still affecting us. Uh -huh. Amen. What about if all of us are consecrated to what God has for us, how that affects the earth? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Now, I want you to see something. Timothy was blessed to have a man of Paul's caliber, yes. his spiritual development, yes. his, the voice that he carried in the body of Christ. Right. Paul, uh, Timothy was blessed to have Paul's caliber as a spiritual father, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But even being associated with this man of God did not ensure Timothy's success. Right. He still had to do right yeah. 
consecrate himself to the call. So um, someone else that you may be associated with, your pastor, maybe those that in your family that they know how to pray, they know how to believe God, that won't ensure your success in fulfilling the plan of God for you just because you're associated with people who are succeeding. Mm -hmm. You want to associate with people who are fulfilling the plan of God. Absolutely. But their success is not yours. That's right. That's like if a heavyweight champion, the, the heavyweight boxing champion of the world, if he dies and goes home to be with the Lord and he leaves his that belt that is given as a trophy to his son and says, I give this to you. He can hold the belt, but he better not get into that ring with only the belt. He better have something else, some practice, some cultivating, some meditating, and some wholeheartedness, you see. Uh, you You might can inherit someone's possessions, but you cannot inherit their worth. You have to, on your own, be a doer of the word. You have to, on your own, be consecrated to what you're born for and fulfill what God has for you. And Timothy, although he was associated with this precious man of God, Paul was saying, you've got to succeed too. Amen. My success isn't your success. You have to walk out God's plan for yourself. And what a privilege that is. What a joy. The, the, The plan of God for your life is great. You say, is, is the plan of God for my life great? Yes, because it came out of God. And nothing that came out of God is anything but great. Yes. Amen. Yes. So never diminish what God has for you. Yes. The part God has for you to bring, it's great. It'll be a great blessing to you and to many others. It might not be as public as what some may be, but uh, public doesn't equal greatness. Can I tell you, there's nothing great apart from the plan of God. Amen. It's the plan of God is what brings greatness to the man's yes. life. Amen. Amen. In all we do, um, know this, we're not left to fulfill this divine plan for our life with our own human ability. We have divine help. Yes. The Holy Ghost is our help. The Word of God is our help in this. Amen. The Holy Ghost is our helper. He is in there to put us over, to make us, make, make us a success in this life, mm-hmm. but also a success in fulfilling the plan of God. Mm-hmm. But notice this, we have to listen to Him. Yes. We have to follow Him. Yes. We have to listen to the Word. We have to follow the Word. Um, the Word will never lead us into anything but success, but we have to follow the Word there. The Holy Spirit will never lead us into anything success anything but success, Mm -hmm. but we have to follow him there. Amen. When we choose to further consecrate ourselves, then the Holy Spirit can empower us toward what we're consecrating ourselves to. Mm -hmm. If we're not consecrated for it, we're not empowered for it. Mm -hmm. We're empowered for it as we consecrate ourselves to it. So what's that mean? Um, When God shows us something that he wants us to do, as we agree to that, then the grace to fulfill it will come upon us. But many times people are wanting to feel like they can do it before they agree. Just agree. Agree. Just agree. And God will empower you to fulfill it. Amen. Amen. It's a mistake to think that we can live out the plan of God in our own human effort and own human ability. We have divine help and we need to draw on that divine ability of the anointing that abides within Mm -hmm. and of the Holy Ghost within us. Amen. Amen. As we draw on his power and ability within, we walk by the spirit. See, we need to walk in the spirit. Amen. What's that mean? Our spirit man dominating us, Mm -hmm. drawing on that divine power, that anointing that abides within to put us over into fulfillment. If you follow the Holy Ghost, he'll lead you into healing. You follow the Holy Ghost, He'll lead you into prosperity. Why? Because that's the plan of God for you. It's it's not only your your inheritance, it's the plan of God for you. His inheritance is His plan for your life. Amen. And He'll lead you into every aspect of His plan Mm -hmm. so that you will fulfill uh, what you're born for and what you're called to Mm -hmm. in addition to receiving the inheritance that belongs to you. Amen. 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 So the Holy Spirit empowers us and God graces us to fulfill this plan. Now, um, Hebrews chapter 13 is a chapter that tells us about all these heroes of faith. Mm -hmm. Uh And it tells us, it gives us a glimpse of the races that they ran, right? Mm -hmm. 
and how they laid hold of God's plan for their life. Then it tells us um, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Mm-hmm. After it tells us about these men of faith who ran and fulfilled the race God had for them. Mm-hmm. In, verse, in chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Chapter 11 was not just to leave us there. It was to include us by going on to chapter 12. He was talking about them in chapter 11 because these same ones that ran their race left us an example of how we're to run ours. He's not just singing their praises and saying, now admire that. He's saying, now move into what they moved into. Fulfill, be consecrated to the plan, have faith in God and fulfill it. So why does he go on and talk to talk about us once he's talked about these great heroes of faith? Because all of these are interested in how we're running our race. Yes. Why? Because they ran one leg of it. We're running another leg of it. It's all the same race. Yes. And they're interested that this race get completed and fulfilled. They ran their leg and they're watching us run our leg. Have you ever seen a relay race and there's four people in that race? The one who runs first, they are interested in how the second one runs and in how the third one runs and how the fourth one runs. Once they run their first leg, they don't just walk off the field and say, I'm done. No, because they know the outcome of that race doesn't just affect them. It affects everyone who ran. So they're interested in how runner number two, runner number three, runner number four are running because they had a part in this. These heroes of faith in chapter 11 had a part. They weren't the whole. They had a part. We have a part and they're watching because they're interested in how the later runners are running. Amen. Why? They sowed their life into it. They want us to see, are we sowing our life into it? We want to show them. We will not be the hindrance to the leg of race you ran. What would you think of the first runner in a relay race? I mean, giving it their all. And they press themselves further than they'd ever pressed themselves. And they hand the baton to runner number two. And runner number two just sits down and starts fiddling with their shoes. Or, and you go, what are you doing? Get up and run. If he's out waving, you know, and waving to the crowd and saying hi to mama and the family and fans and stuff, the first runner's going, what are you doing? Yes, they're there, but they're not there to hurt your race. Get up and run your race. This is what consecration does. It gets you not mindful. It cuts you away from those things that would hinder you in your race to run. Know this, it matters to others how we run. It matters. It matters because heaven's watching. Heaven is watching. Uh, Loved ones that have gone on before you. They're watching. They're interested in you running your race. Amen. Amen. And running it unhindered, Mm -hmm. running it without holding back. Mm -hmm. Consecration says, I'm not holding back. Amen. Amen. So again, Hebrews chapter 12, verse one, wherefore seeing we also, look at that. It threw us into the same category. We also with them talked about in chapter 11. Don't count yourself out of something God already included you in on. Amen. Don't dismiss yourself from what God included you in on. Wherefore, because of all this, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Uh, One translation said they're sitting in the grandstands of heaven watching us. They're interested. So we need to run mindful. We have an audience. We have an audience and we want those who are watching us run, cheering. They're cheering us on the right direction. We don't want to be running the wrong direction when the runner's not even paying attention to his course and he's just walking up and watching what's going on in the stands. What you doing? Pay attention to your course. Get back on course. Amen. And so it says here, Uh, that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us, now he's telling us what to do. Uh Mm -hmm. Let us lay aside every weight. Mm -hmm. 
and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now look at this. Let us lay aside. God's not going to lay it aside. Your spouse can't lay it aside for you. Your pastor can't lay it aside for you. You have to lay it aside. What are we going to lay aside? A weight. Notice this, a weight, a weight doesn't necessarily mean something negative. What's a weight do? It slows you down. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that's going to impede or slow your pace, yes. let go of it. Go yes. of it. Now, uh, notice this, these two words, lay aside. Mm-hmm. Um, when I think of laying aside, think of it. It doesn't mean that what you're doing as I said, has been necessarily wrong. In a previous season, Mm -hmm. something might have been appropriate for a previous season. But as you advance into another season, there are certain things that that were fine for the previous season that no longer work in the next season. Mm -hmm. So we have to know what to lay aside that won't help us in the next season. Mm -hmm. And it might have been fine. Can't you look back over your spiritual growth and development? What God permitted of you as a spiritual baby, mm-hmm. he won't permit anymore as you grow. Right. Amen. Amen. He expects more of us as we grow. Mm-hmm. But if we hold on to things that keep us spiritually young, mm-hmm. hold, hold on to things that keep us carnal, mm-hmm. hold on to things that keep us dominated by the natural arena, mm-hmm. we need to lay them aside so we can advance because they're a weight to us that's keeping us from advancing. Yes. Now, think of something... Um, what about if, a, if a, someone's in, a, in the kitchen making a recipe? Let's say they're making a cake. Um, flour is an ingredient to that. Uh-huh. So they pour out the measured amount of flour that they need. Once they're done with it, they no longer need that flour. What do they do? They lay it aside. Mm-hmm. What's that mean? There are things that you no longer need. Yes. They're not usable to you anymore. Uh-huh. Lay it aside. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. Once they're done with it and they've laid it aside, they don't go back and pick it up. Lay it aside and then don't go back to it and pick it up. Lay it aside. Why do you lay it aside? I'm done with it. I'm done with it. Can I say this? I laid, I've laid aside worry. I'm done with it. I'm not going back and picking it up. I've learned beyond that. I've learned what God has said about worry. I'm not going to pick it up again. I'm laying that aside. Why? Because I've chosen to be finished with it. Amen. When do you lay something aside when you've chosen to be finished with it? Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Uh, what about a way of speaking, mm-hmm. a way of thinking? Yes. There are things that might have been appropriate when we were younger spiritually, but God puts a greater expectation on our thought life yes. and on our words as we grow. Uh-huh. So we have to lay former things aside mm-hmm. and not pick them up again. Yes. Don't go back to it. Yes and lose your progress. So let us lay aside the weights and then leave them there. Don't go back. And then also let us lay aside the sin which does so easily beset us. Uh Notice that besets us. It didn't say that besets everyone. Certain things that seem to trip you up. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin, is what the word says. Notice this. Sin isn't necessarily always what we would say a deliberate sinful act. Sometimes it's failing to use our faith. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And so um, we are laying aside something of sin that besets us. What trips up one won't trip up another. So God may permit one person to continue having a certain thing in their life and he won't permit it to someone else because it's not tripping up one, but it's tripping up another. You say, what do you mean by that? Is God unfair? No. Remember when Jesus was dealing with the rich young ruler Mm -hmm. and uh, in dealing with that rich young ruler, he recognized that there was something of him is that the, the man, this young ruler he had confidence in his wealth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He trusted in his wealth. Mm-hmm. His faith was in his wealth. Amen. Jesus said to him, go and sell all you have. Mm-hmm. Give it to the poor. Mm-hmm. Come follow me. Mm-hmm. Right. 
Now, have you ever seen somebody obey Jesus and their life take a less than flow because of that? No. If he would have given all he had, as Jesus said, and come followed him, Jesus would have loaded him back up and hid and had more than he ever began with. But many times people take that and misunderstand it to read that Jesus didn't want anybody to have anything. That's not true. He was, he never told anybody else that. He only told that to one man. That was not a word that he spoke to every man. He told that man that. Why? Because that man was tripping up over it. How do we know he was tripping up over it? Because when Jesus told him to do it, he wouldn't do it. Why? It was tripping him up. Amen. Did he later do it? Maybe he did. But that moment he didn't. And so that's what, when it says the sin that so easily besets you. So you can't look at somebody else's life and say, God, you seem to permit them to do something, but you don't permit me to do it. It's because he's dealing with you based on what trips you up. He's not dealing with them based on what trips you up. He's dealing with them based on what trips them up. So the Holy Spirit will lead you. Set aside this. If he's leading you to do it, then it's wrong for us to continue in it. That's right. That's right. Amen. Well, these things are helping us because it has something to do with that anointing that's within us flowing unhindered. And we want the power of God to flow without reservation. Amen. We don't want to be blocking it and get in the way of it. We've been teaching out of my book, The Price of the Double Portion Anointing. We invite you to get your copy. You can go to JesusTheHealer.org and purchase your copy there. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Jesus the Healer Crusade in Fresno, California at Elite Event Venue, located at 4105 West Fig Garden Drive, Fresno, California, 93722. The dates are March 25th through the 29th. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. Come expecting miracles. If you need prayer, please call our prayer line. We have trained ministers on staff who are ready to agree with you for your miracle. We invite you to join us for our annual prayer conference here at World Harvest Church in Marietta, California, April 9th through the 11th. We would like everyone attending to pre-register on our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. We invite you to join us at World Harvest Church, home of Dufresne Ministries in Marietta, California, located at 23109 Palomar Street, Marietta, California. This is a word and spirit church. Join us in person or online Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific time. For more information, go to DufresneMinistries.org.